everyone, this is my reaction to the seventh episode of Magia Record. And last episode, we met a new girl, Felicia, who seems to be kind of hot-headed, I would say. She's got this big old hammer, and she's not at all shy about rushing into combat and just swinging it around and hoping for the best. As you can imagine, quite a liability for any group that has her, you know. We saw the group that she was with before that, you know, they, they have their opinions of her, you know. And even Yachio was like, you know, this girl, I don't know if you want to work with her. She's kind of not not a great partner in crime or partner in magical girl, which fighting, I guess, be more accurate here. But anyway, she uh, she was with us for most of the day and she drank the owl, the magical lucky owl water with with Iroha. And now we're trying to figure out this whole this whole situation, really. And we have these sketchy individuals show up talking about eradicating witches and wanting them to back off going after the Uwasa and all that. And Felicia is seemingly getting wrapped up into it all. So, yeah, I'm not sure where we go from here, but it could be bad. So, let's see if that is indeed the case. So, three, two, one, play. Whew. I don't think this is where we left off. I don't remember a burning building. But I assume it's Felicia's fault. Uh, I think we have a flashback here, actually. Uh, I'm sorry, I blamed you, Felicia. I'm sure it's not your fault. It's probably a witch. That's the assumption, at least, right? Freaking Cuba. Yes. Become a magical girl. Sign a contract with me. You will not regret it, for sure. She, he will give you your hammer, and you can squish things with it. And that's when it started. Uh, that picture. So Felicia can't forgive witches, it seems like. Which could be a problem if it drives her to do, drives her to make mistakes. And now think things through. Because the look she had at the end of last episode was very concerning. One of the most... I'm not sure what a good word for it is actually, but it was not a pleasant face. We also saw Kyoko last episode. That was nice. <laughs> uh, at least somebody has a shield. A shield magical girl probably couldn't do much on her own, so she probably needs a group. Okay, back into it. I, this seems a little bit sketchy. <laughs> Does that count as saying something? Probably not. So clearly she's going along with them. Uh... Is that dripping upwards? I don't know how that works. But this is actually kind of a cool looking place. Although still... Unsafe. <laughs> okay. Well, they're cute, but... 
Okay. <laughs> okay. I really don't know how this organization works. Right. <laughs> Where are their wings? <laughs> okay, I sort of, kind of, not really get it. <laughs> okay, that's not a bad goal, but I still don't really trust this this whole thing. Well, I, that does kind of make sense, but... I, I have this feeling you're not telling us everything. Just like something I can't shake the feeling of. Oh, Kyoko? Is that you, Kyoko? Yes, it is Kyoko. I, I now trust this place more. If Kyoko's a part of it. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> Sasugashi show. And we even saw a flashback of it. <laughs> Did you ever have faith in her? Let's be honest. Three hundred meters to destination. I assume that's what the M stands for. If it was miles, that'd be a quite a distance. Uh. Okay, let's go. I'm sure this will all be fine. And just the way it floats up, it just really makes this place seem otherworldly. A very nice touch. <laughs> They're taking all the witches, you're monopolizing them, it's so horrible. I see how it is. <laughs> what more do you need? It's really nice to have you, Kyoko. Uh, you have a friend, at least one. <laughs> yeah, and she she'll offer you she'll offer you the snacks. I've also missed that line of hers. And she's got a hammer too. They're laughing, but I don't get what's funny. Is that more lucky owl water? <laughs> yeah, I gotta keep track of that number. We still don't know exactly what that entails. Just something about people disappearing. Yeah. Really is not worth it. Because if you ever lose your supply of water, you are screwed. Which means if you don't obey us, you're in trouble. Basically a stranglehold they get on you. <laughs> These two, I do kind of like these two. Skuyo and Tsukasa, I'll try to remember that. Looks like they're here. Q. <laughs> uh. You could say that. <laughs> <laughs> I 
She did, unfortunately. However, I don't think drinking more is the best way to handle it. She did she keep saying that. But I don't know if they're going about I'm sorry, what was what was I saying? Trust me, I'm already there. Okay. Are we gonna have a transformation sequence of some sort, perhaps? Oh wow, those visuals. And even the music. Yeah, things are definitely ramping up here. Is that what this is? I mean, I guess that kind of makes sense. Why the Uwasa stuff looks so witchy. Yeah, that makes it okay. Okay, let's let's get into this. Uh, uh good thing we're a group. Oof. But at what cost? Well, it's also impossible to eliminate all crime, but cops still gotta do their best. I'm just saying that's not a reason not to do anything. But the methods probably still aren't the best. <laughs> it's just, oh, those things are so... Ooh, there we go. We gotta see the hammer again. It's been far too long since I've seen Felicia swing her hammer around. And, oh, we did touch. Okay. Uh... uh... It's a good question. They touched hands and then things exploded. Oh. Yeah, but it's probably not. Uh... Man, she can do some damage. But she's like, you know, berserker, so... <laughs> As that, this Kyoko had enough. So, yeah. Guess it wasn't meant to last, and... I don't think it's to see her in magical girl form. Oh, I guess we just kind of made a staircase there. Yeah, that water's a problem. <laughs> Can't really forget about that. <laughs> oh, uh, she looks so cool when she fights. That's really gross, though. Just the sound effects of all of that. Don't touch the six. That's probably bad luck. Can you stop making adorable sounds? I, I try to hate you. Huh. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> stop it. Stop it, QB. Uh. Uh, that could be a problem, too. It looks like Yuraha is kind of alone there, so... What, you mean wildly swinging my hammer around is not how we solve all the problems? You mean there might be a better way? <laughs> oh. Uh, revenge, anger, angst, I... <laughs> oh... Oh, jeez. That was... That was destructive. Think it, think it may have worked? Well, they're down.
Is it? If you say so. Uh, I guess they want to become witches. I... Uh, this. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. Meanwhile, <laughs> wow, yeah, that's damaged like all around her, but didn't really hurt her. Oh, because of the luck. Oh, right, the luck's going down. I get it now. Yeah, that number's almost zero. That's a problem. I should get any more water very soon. Yeah, still not sure exactly what that's about. Oh! Oh no, oh no, bad touch, bad touch. I think we may have a repeat of that now. What, what are they even doing? Like, they sprouted flowers from the ground. I, I don't really get that, what they even are right now. I don't know if becoming witch-like existence like this is, that, is the right answer. <laughs> but I think we did it. So there you go. Oh, QB, did you just turn into water? Can we drink you? Okay, yeah, then it all comes down. Yeah, we kind of took care of that while you were down here. Some, some, some people are walking in. Are they going to scold you? Huh, wow, okay. That's a... That's unexpected. I guess she is around. And this is like the real one, right? I don't know if, how much we could trust her. But uh, it was a nice hug. But she's clearly part of this organization, so... <laughs> Welcome party. Yeah, I didn't think so. But why, though? Yeah, we had that whole thing with the fake you. It's kind of hard not to believe in them at this point. I don't think that's going to happen. But you like use witches and stuff, so... Is that Sayonara backwards? It went by too quickly. Man, this place is just gorgeous looking. This one's not going to be as easy as the Seance Shrine one either, so... Ah, uh, okay. She may be running away before we can have a proper fight. That's unfortunate. I want to see what she could do in combat. Maybe next time. But we got to see her. We know she's alive and around.
Yeah, find a nice bridge to sleep under. I mean, plenty of places at her. Yeah, plenty of space at her house. Like Giaccio lives in that big old dorm house or whatever. We could use all the help we can get, even if you are a bit of a liability. <laughs> yeah, that's step one. That's where we begin. <laughs> They're all very pretty encouraging. <laughs> uh... Yeah, just blame everything on wishes. <sighs> no one said you couldn't be mad at them, just don't let it control you. Uh... Uh... <laughs> Show. Okay. Okay. Yes, I still want you to come home with me. <laughs> yeah, she's the kind of girl you worry about if she's not around. If, if you don't want to do it for your sake, do it for Iroha's. Just get her foot to the door. She did, I remember that. Yeah, you can't say no to that, Felicia. It's the best offer you're gonna get, I assure you. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of Azur Lane a little bit. <laughs> it's a weird city, honestly. But it's where all the action is, so... <laughs> Yeah, sort of. Kamehama Fest. Oh, it just, just changed, okay. I want to go home with you. He's Johnny Kaidi Tai, I think I said. Whew. Well, that was an action-packed episode. Which is fine, because last time was more slice of life for you. <sighs> and Stinger. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we should have a little bit of that left. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I know, right? They're basically besties now. Even though we had a little bit of friction. A lot of boxes. Are you a magical girl? Please help me, huh? 
And we just have a Kyoko shot here to end us off. Bit of a bit of a shaft head still going on, I think. Oh, another picture, wow. Okay. Thank you for that. And then, you know, the usual picture. But anyway, that was the seventh episode of Magia Record. And what can I say about this episode? Well, first, first off, we had a flashback of the whole Felicia, witch, parents situation and meeting Kyube. He was like, oh, you yeah, seem to have some horrible things happening to you. So uh, have, a, have a sign on a contract, becoming a magical girl. That'll fix all your problems. Just uh, just go do that, okay? That makes we saw that one picture of Felicia and her family with the heads of the family burned off. It's, it's a very tragic picture, but also very... Full of meaning, you know, like well done symbolism there, I guess you'd call it. But anyway, the environment we went through here was very interesting, like very nicely, you know, drawn and everything, but also the water flowing upwards added a lot to make it just feel very mysterious and like we're in a very weird spot. I met a couple girls, okay, one was called Tsuku Tsukuyo Amane, White Feather Wings of the Magius. And the other one was Tsukasa. So very similar names. Amane, White Feather, Wings of the of the Magius. Magius. I don't know how exactly I pronounce that. I'm just gonna go with Magius. Yeah, they ask if they're the boss, but they are not the boss. They're just higher up than the Black Feather. So it's like this whole organization hierarchy thing that I don't fully understand. But they do use witches to accomplish their goal. They do want to eliminate witches and suck cause salvation for magical magical girls like this is the kind of things that they say however they definitely come across as untrustworthy like without question most uh, mostly because of the you know the methods they use using witches and all that stuff like they're clearly doing some bad things for their goals even if their overall goal is something that you could say we could sort of all kind of get behind but I did enjoy watching these two. That are their 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 interactions, you know, like like twins would, you know, a lot of like mute uh, combining poses and stuff. I don't know what a way to phrase would be, but you know, I'm sure you know what I mean. Like symmetrical stuff that they do. I always enjoy seeing a lot of that. But yeah, basically they got. They got Felicia to go along with this, and then Kyoko shows up, who apparently, yeah, is already here, because she says another recruit, kind of implying that she's already a part of this group. However, she's not really a part of this group, it's just mostly a place for information, you know? Trying to learn what's going on, get involved with things, like, she doesn't have any real loyalty to it at all. It's kind of the, the idea. I like how we just, like, put a tracking GPS thing on her, because that makes way too much sense. Yeah, yeah you should totally do that. So, yeah. Yeah, just some of the things that those two do. Very, very interesting. But eventually we walk in there to find them. Well, we find the uh, the white feather twins over here. We battled a little bit. We had a very nice little uh, hand on looking at each other, hands on each other's cheeks, bit a little bit there, which is very nice. But yeah, that's when I started to actually summon the witch stuff and very much come across as not a trustworthy organization by it to, to anybody. And because and because. Felicia hates witches, the, the act that the idea of them like using witches like this, I, I don't think that's that right with her at all. So I think that was kind of when they lost her as a potential recruit. And, you know, Kyoko kind of also going along with it because Kyoko was never really dedicated to this to begin with. So things just went terribly for those two, honestly. We just kind of destroyed all of them and Yeroha taking down the core by again becoming that witch like entity that she does. I always just, just, there's just something oddly satisfying about just watching Felicia use her hammer. Just She just swings it around and hits the ground. You hear a big boom and things flying around. I don't know why. It just gets me oddly excited whenever I see it. And just seeing Kyoko fight it all gets me excited because it's freaking Kyoko. But yeah, this was a weird scene when they talked about the soul gems getting cloudy, but then they said it was to their advantage. 
which I didn't quite get that, but I guess it's connected to whatever that phenomenon that Iroha did before was when she became kind of witch-like temporarily. I still don't like fully understand this mechanism though. But it was after they said that they got some kind of a new form. Like, they didn't really look witch-like exactly, but they did become something that I don't quite fully understand. Like, I don't know what you would call this, but they had like... Not really as, around a sphere, but it was... I really don't know how to describe it. I don't have the words. But they became something right there. Which was very interesting. And luckily for Iroha, she still had her leg going on, so she was a little bit protected there. But it always looks so freaky, just the, the mask on her and the flowing hair. Very disturbing stuff. But, yeah, the, 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 the Amani girls didn't have the mask, so I don't know if it's the same thing or not. Or if it is the same thing, it's just different for every person. I really don't know. A lot of this is still very confusing to me. But I love when the water finally came back down. That was great. And then we had a big of a bit of a reveal here. When Mifuyu herself walks in. Looking great, by the way. Love her outfits. And the first thing I thought of was, you know, Yachio would be pretty excited to see her. But Yui was actually <laughs> the one that ran up to her first. And man, the look on Yui's face just... The pure happiness that she was emanating in there was just I almost enough to bring you to tears, really. And then she had just ran up towards her to give her a hug, which is all very nice. However, you know, you couldn't like fully enjoy it because you know there's something else going on here. Shmifu is obviously a part of this organization, so we're not just going to be like buddy buddy hang out now. That's obviously not going to happen, even though she's very happy to see her. It, the whole thing just kind of led to a lot of mixed feelings. But, you know, at least me for you did also seem kind of happy to see her. They got a little bit of blushing on her there and all that. Because if she was mean to her, I don't think I could have handled that. <laughs> I mean, not, not after she looked like that. If she was mean to her, that would have been too much. But yeah, she is kind of in an antagonistic role to us for now, it seems like. Which is very unfortunate because these two obviously care a lot about her. Yeah, Yachio comments about her leaving without saying anything, but Mifuyu kind of seems like it's acts like it's that's it's the opposite. The one that was left behind was dot dot dots, and just a bunch of silence. But I guess she's trying to imply that it's her, but I don't really know the situation well enough to say for sure mm. what the situation is. But the two of them seem to not quite be on the same page in regards to it, so we'll see. And she says here, if you if you come join the wings of the Mag Mag Magius Yachio, we'd love to have you, but of course that's not going to happen. Not at all. She says that their aim really is the salvation of magical girls, but that's not necessarily enough to for them to be an organization worth supporting, you know. It's only one one part of them. Because, you know, they mentioned Uwasa abducting people and stuff, so they obviously do sketchy things, even if it is for a so-called greater purpose. And yeah, there definitely was Sayonara, like, mirrored. I guess supposed to represent, like, saying goodbye to me for you because we're clearly on opposite sides here. Like, we can't just hold hands and join together here. But I dreamed of being set free from this fate. Yeah, so I don't think she likes being a magical girl. So I guess she probably just feels desperate and, like, this is the only way to really do it. Otherwise, it's just a matter of being a magical girl for the rest of your life and doing your best just not to die or become a witch. Because if you're a magical girl, at the end of the day, that is your life. You fight, you get you get the, the grief seeds, you cleanse yourself and rinse, repeat. That is your life. There is no there's no end goal. There's no point where you're like, well, I succeeded and now I get to be a normal girl again. I can say goodbye to the whole witch thing. So it's possible that Maf Mif Mafiu, Mifi, whatever her name was, that she's like... She she doesn't want that. She's done with that. She can't stand that anymore. And this organization, their methods is the way to finally get rid of the witch problem for good and free themselves of that fate. And I guess she just feels like that's the only thing she can do at this point. I don't know. Something like that, maybe. Just kind of what I'm thinking. Like I said, I don't, still don't fully understand that organization at all, but it's what I got with the bits and pieces they've given me. And then we had one final scene, basically convincing convincing Felicia to stay with her. Because we don't really want her to be homeless. That's not it's not great. It's really not great. Even if you're a magical girl, and so you'd be a little bit safer, but still, it's not great. You don't want to do that if you can avoid it. Just everyone trying to be encouraging and stuff, but she was 
initially resistant to it, but eventually we got through to her. <laughs> yeah, when she like kind of breaks down and cries, you have the showers flowing water. That was a uh, that was interesting. I'm not sure what to make of that exactly. Like it's obviously supposed to be symbolic of tears or whatever, but it was just it was just kind of weird. I just can't decide whether I like that or not, <laughs> but it was interesting. And I still see them just kind of gazing each other, into each other's eyes. And that was kind of the point where we knew it got through to her. I did like Kyoko's comment about Kamehama being weirder than I heard, because it is, yeah, this is a very weird spot. And we got this freaking Magius Feathers Cult thing over there on top of everything else. It's, it's a weird place. It's a weird place. I mentioned something about Kamehama Fest. I'm not sure exactly what that was about. It had like June 1st over there and then it became June 0. That was also kind of weird, but whatever. And that was the episode. I mean, we had a, we had a stinger. Something about, uh, yeah, uh, the boarding house, which turned out to be the Mikazuki Villa. It's a really nice place, actually. Like, I basically completely love the design. It's got white, blue, like, I would live there in a heartbeat. That looks like a very nice place. But, you know, it's all thanks to the Lucky Owl Water, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. But yeah, we have just everything just kind of worked out for the most part. So yeah, pretty good episode, I would say. Hopefully next episode we can shift back into some more slice of life, you know, just kind of walking around town, exploring, hearing rumors, making new friends. You know, hopefully we get a little bit more of that next episode, because that is kind of what I like the most, you know. And I do like how Yachio and Felicia seem to really... Not really make up, but like bond, you know, because they weren't getting get along too well at the beginning. But I think we became a long way. So we're all best friends now. We're all besties. We're going to just have pillow fights and it'll be great. Thank you for watching and a special thanks to Snokey and Ryan for supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you consider clicking the like button and leaving a comment because that's a great and easy way to let me know that people want more. If you want to do something big to help the channel, you can support me on Patreon and get nice benefits like early access to certain videos. See you next time.